From ultraviolet to hairs to mixtures with natural hairs to superfine and other synthetic types, the world of dubbing can sometimes be overwhelming, especially for beginning tires. But by employing a few basic principles or practices, this fundamental fly tying skill can be mastered. It's important to remember that less is more. The most common mistake that I see beginning tires make when either creating a dubbing rope or loop is trying to add too much material. When selecting your fibers, simply hold a clump in your hand and gently pluck a sparse mixture of fibers from the edge. Also, don't be afraid to increase the tack on your thread when working with furs and synthetics by using materials like loom swax. If you're a right-handed tire, your thumb should move toward the vise and your index finger away when creating a dubbing rope. The opposite is true for left-handers. Superfine dubbing is often used in the creation of dry flies. When selecting the fibers, the process is similar. Hold the clump and gently and delicately pluck some sparse fibers from the edge. When using this type of dubbing, I prefer not to use any tack or adhesive on the thread. The fine diameter of these fibers easily twist into a nice tight rope that can be used to create buoyant and smoothly tapered dry fly bodies. When creating a sparse dubbing loop with synthetic materials, I prefer to apply some loon swax to the thread, leaving the back half of the loop open. This allows me to efficiently stick the fibers to the string where I applied the swax. After the fibers have been applied, I simply bring the back half of the loop over with the bobbin and attach the thread to the hook. After a few twists with my hands, the loop is complete and is ready to be wrapped onto the hook shank. When building a heavier silhouette for a pattern like this crawdad, I use a more traditional closed off dubbing loop by immediately securing the thread to the hook shank. This allows me to use the tension of the two sides of the loop to pack larger amounts of dubbing into the loop. Once the loop has been loaded with a sufficient amount of material, it requires numerous twists to tighten in the bulky material. When making wraps with this kind of loop, it's important to brush back the fibers between wraps. This prevents them from being trapped by subsequent wraps and makes for easier trimming and builds a smoother silhouette for your pattern. The most common dubbing tool that I use is a dubbing teaser. The rough metal edges of this tool allow me to break free fibers that have been applied with a dubbing rope to give the pattern a buggier look. So as you move forward with this, remember, less is more. Less material, less hassle, more efficiency, and more high quality patterns which hopefully lead to more fish finding their way into your net.